You have to recognize moments that the Holy Spirit gives you to produce fruit. There are times where there is a moment given to you and the moment is disguised with adversity or trials or temptation or enemies, things looking very uh, turbulent, but it is an opportunity to bear fruit. You're often being pit in a situation that is a fruit bearing atmosphere. And so let me show you something. The fruit of love, it flourishes in the midst of hate. Yes, because if you think about it, if you are around hate, you actually have to use the muscle of love all the more. Now, here's the powerful thing about love. Love is not just actions and how you treat somebody. Love is also a mentality to reject thoughts that make you fearful, to reject thoughts that make you suspicious of God's word. When you think about love, the first John chapter four started talking about perfect love, how it casts out fear. Fear has torment and whoever fear has not been made perfect in love. So you understand that love, when it goes into the stage of perfection, this person has learned the mental avenue of love. There's a physical avenue of love that you do unto others as you will have them do unto you or you love your neighbor as yourself. But then there is the love that comes from recognizing there is a thought that's not supposed to remain in your mind and it is your job to remove that thought. That is a dimension of love that a lot of people don't know about. Love increases in the presence of hate. Peace increases in the presence of storms, adversity, and trials. Self-control, temperance, it increases in emotional times. Times where you're provoked. Times where you're hurt. Times where you're rejected. Times where you're criticized or persecuted. Times where you have a, a, a heated point in your life. Because if you think about this, remember Daniel is inside of a kingdom. And remember, they went to the king to pass a law that would cause Daniel to end up in the lion's den because the law was to focus on the fact that he was praying to God. Remember, no man shall pray, pray to God these 30 plus days. Uh, what? The law was created to target Daniel's decisions. Now, watch this here. I'm going to show you something. Daniel has a chance to become petty, wicked, and fight eye for eye, two for two. But notice what Daniel does. He doesn't break the righteousness of God. I'm about to get off of here, but I want you to remember this. When things happen in life, Satan is off, off, also giving you favor to break the righteousness of God. What happens when Satan favors you? You are given an offer to resist the Holy Spirit. When Satan favors you, it is Satan offering you a life where you ignore God perfectly. Have you ever seen people in, 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 in life and you're like, well, how is this person able to live against the Lord? And like they do it consistently for five years, 10 years, 20 years. And you're like, what? What's going on? How come they're not? 
because they received favor from Satan. They accepted it. And the favor was to teach, give them access to a mentality that will make them resist the Holy Spirit. And do you know that the mindset of resisting the Holy Spirit could be established on you to such a degree that conviction will no longer have any effect. So I'm, I'm showing you this. Self-control works in moments where there is um, you being provoked. Self-control temperance works in moments where you're being mistreated. Self-control works in moments where you recognize divine authority. Self-control works in moments when you um, become dedicated to who you're not supposed to trespass against. The fruit of self-control is a reminder of a boundary that you're not supposed to go over. So remember this, uh, when God is telling Moses to speak to the rock, this is a boundary being given to Moses. When he goes over the boundary, then God says, you're not going to your promise. Because see, the promise was predicated on a boundary. Instructions are boundaries. Instructions are restrictions. You follow instructions, you respect restrictions, and then you bear fruit in which God, he himself eats of your fruit. So you, so I want you to see this. God made decisions you make as a food, as a fruit that feeds him. Have you ever ate watermelon or cantaloupe or mangoes or any fruit, grapes, and it tastes so good, tastes so sweet. You enjoyed it. It does something to your brain. You feel good about it. Well, the fruit of the spirit, God pitch you on purpose in situations where there is a fruit of the spirit being demanded out of you to come out. When Joshua was serving Moses, he was able to produce different fruits. Without Moses, he would have never produced these fruits. So he's producing love because here's there's somebody for him to love. He's producing peace because he's supposed to be wholesome around Moses so Moses could get the full experience from him. If he's broken, then Moses has to deal with a broken man that now Moses is trying to fix him instead of him fixing the things that Moses need him to fix. So now the, the roles have switched. Moses is trying to make him whole when he actually been anointed by God to make Moses whole wherever there is deficiencies. Do you know the people that have the greatest relationship with their prophet are people that recognize I'm in his life to actually teach him also. I'm here to teach him that for me, a prophet is without and not without honor for me. I'm here to teach him when it comes to me, I am harmless. When it comes to me, I am a protector. So whatever that prophet experiences from the hatred of the world, when it comes to me, I'm teaching him that I am something different. I am now an individual that is influenced by the Holy Ghost towards him. I want to give you a dimension, lastly, of the fruit of the Spirit that a lot of people miss. The Holy Spirit bears more fruits through your life when you yield to him towards your leader. So while Peter is in the presence of Jesus, he is now recognizing where he has no temperance because he cut the man ear off. You see, in the presence of Jesus, the disciples are seeing how they are not in love because they started competing about who was the greatest in the kingdom. So if you look at even that conversation, they, they are now recognizing when Jesus rebuked them, hey, y'all have hate in your heart. 
you don't love your brethren. So if you look at different scenarios of when a man of God shows up in a person's life, they get to see where they are fruitless with God, where fruits are not being born, where they're not producing, where they're not manifesting their full potential and where the leading of the spirit is being quenched. See, Elijah tells Elisha, I'm going on a trip. He doesn't tell him to go on the trip with him. But Elisha is so dedicated to bearing the fruit that Elisha volunteers himself. Volunteering yourself is different than you disrespecting someone because you're pitting yourself as a pursuer of favor. You notice Elisha was not raping Elijah to let him come, but he was showing him it is in my will that I want to help you. I'm not doing it because I'm called to. I'm not doing it because I'm anointed to. I'm doing it because now I want to. There are people that do things because they are anointed to do it. But then there is a realm of doing things because you want to do it. Meaning that you have gone from just having an assignment to having an addiction. An addiction is greater than assignment because if you assignment minded, Satan can also come into that arena and start telling you there's another assignment now. That assignment is over. That's why people leave their man of God. The devil always tells them your assignment with this man is over. So if you assignment minded, it's not like you are protected from deception. Because how many people have you met in life that are talking about, oh, my assignment is over here. So God is moving me on. Well, meanwhile, if you really looked into the situation, it wasn't that their assignment was over. They were offended. It wasn't that their assignment was over. They misunderstood something. It wasn't that their assignment was over. They got angry at something. Something made them bitter. Something made them upset. Something made them angry. Something made them jealous. And people will say, oh, my assignment is over now, simply because their sensuality has come to the top. Their feelings have come to the top and now they break assignment. Korah was listening to Moses and Korah started critiquing Moses and saying, no, that's not of the word. That's not of the God. That's not of the law. That's not of the scripture. And he started listening to Moses talk and he started looking at how people was hearkening to Moses and following Moses. And in his mind, his evaluation was this not of God. Now, remember, Korah acted as if God was using him to talk against how Moses was being led by God to train the people. But it wasn't God behind Korah. It was Satan. And Satan was there to break Korah's assignment, which was beautiful towards Moses. So I'm telling you, don't even be assignment minded because you will get tired in your assignment eventually. And God permits everybody to get tired in their assignment because it is your job to pursue the fresh anointing and also to bear fruit until there is a death of all the weariness and all the tiredness and fatigue. And now you're flowing because you want to, not just because you're called to. Changing the will through the fruit of the spirit, that your decisions will now be influenced by the fruit of the spirit. Changing your will. Is something that you have to learn to do because things will not go the way that you want it to go all the time. And if you are a conditional person, you are already cursed because there are some conditions that God will schedule for you to be in. And you yourself will think higher of yourself and say, no, that's not for me. It's very important that you have to really humble yourself every season of your life 
and really be unselfish and really be lowly because there'll come a place where God will tell you to stay with somebody, possibly. God will tell you to drive a used car. God will tell you to get a ride to someone. God will tell you to, to stay with somebody. Yes. And if your mind is like, oh, no, no, I'm the lender, not the borrower. If you wrongly divide the word, now you're not going to bear the fruit of the spirit. You actually going to resist and quench the spirit because you want to elevate yourself higher than what the spirit is putting you in a predicament to produce things through you. Like I told you. The only major boast. It has to be the death, the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus. That has to be the major boast of everybody that he's reigning on the throne because all these other things, though they are uh, things that make you feel good or they're things that make you feel great, you want to always remember that the spirit of God he wants you always to be using your faith and authority and speaking words of dominion all the time. Your words will change every verdict that you currently see. Start talking now. Start prophesying now and start letting your words prophesy what's going to take place. I'm even talking about your health. The healing going to happen because you say so. You're going to decree a thing and it shall be established. The finance is going to shift because you say so. You are going to be saying things that are going to come to pass. People curse themselves all the time and say things that come to pass that they don't want to happen. But they said it out their own mouth. Or they came into agreement with somebody that said it. They never denounced it. Well, you are going to announce everything that you want to happen from now on. And I'm going to tell you, nothing is going to remain the same. As you prophesy, the Holy Spirit is going to guide you to that prophecy and its full fulfill fulfillment. You're going to see the fulfillment of everything that you prophesy. And so get ready to start being a commander of conditions. And it's going to change. Creative miracles are going to happen in the body, in the blood, in the bones. And I'm going to tell you like this here. Love is very important. Because love is the strength of God to change your mind to light thoughts, right thoughts, life thoughts. Love is very important. And if you don't have love, remember what Apostle Paul was saying, if I prophesy, if I do miracles, if I have not love, it's all in vain. You want to receive the love of God. Romans 5, 5 said that the love of God has been poured out into your heart by the Holy Ghost that has been given unto you. The love of God has been poured out into your heart. You want to operate in love so that there'll be no lack because God is love. So when you operate in love, you operate in God and you operate in the fullness of his nature all the time. And if you need a healing in your body, it happens. If you need finances, it's supplied. The Holy Spirit guides you into all things that you desire and want. But you got to learn to first be in perfect love, which does what? How do, how do I know I'm in perfect love? It casts out fear. I'm no longer stressed, worried. I'm no longer angry. I'm no longer jealous. I'm no longer upset. I'm no longer condemned. When I'm in love, I'm casting out everything that Satan imparts.